Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be making not one, not two, but three game prototypes or mechanics. And the plan is to reactivate my old Fiverr gig and then lower the price to $5, which is the minimum, and then try to deliver those games or prototypes in less than five hours. And well, let's just get right into the video. Hey Dietly, can you make me like a procedural animation for skeletons reforming like when they die all their parts go ragdoll mode and then come back together after some time? Here is a reference of what I tried to say. Oh man, you need to use commas. <laughs> go to 0 0.30 and then he links a YouTube video. It doesn't need to be a game, I just want this mechanic for my game. It will save me a lot of time. Thanks. Yeah, okay, that is very easy to achieve with some rigid bodies, so let's get to work. The way this system will work is by having a script called Bone Builder. This script will find all the child game objects that contain a script called Bone. This Bone script will store some information of each body part such as rotation and position in local space. I will import a skeleton model I have created in the past for a game jam so that we have something to look at other than a cube or sphere. Creating a new function inside the bone script to activate the ragdoll by simply enabling use gravity on the rigid body is kinematic to false and enabling its collider so that it does not go through the ground. Using the bone builder we can access all the bones and call this new function for all of them. It looks quite boring, so I will add a force to them as well as a torque. Now it looks a bit cooler. For reanimating them, we have to lerp their position towards the safe position and rotation on each bone. And voila! It's all working as intended. It didn't really take me that long to do this, so I will spend some time making this look cooler by setting their bones on fire, giving them a shake when they are reforming, a little puff when the bones collide with the ground and also add an AOE explosion at the mouse position to kill the skeletons. Cool thing about this is that we can fit in the position of the explosion to our bones and add force to them relative to this position. That's pretty much it for the first order. I think it came out quite good and I really hope this ends up being useful for you. On to the next one. Hi Davies. I'm a fan of your tutorials and have used some of them nice. in my side projects whenever uni gives me some free time, lol. Anyways, can you create Sebastian Lags, or is it Lake? I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce that well. Geography game, but instead of having it be a plane on Earth, change it for Mario and Mushroom World. So you will run around the world avoiding enemies and capturing stars as Mario, but spicy Mario, like maybe make him Dark Mario, lol. So yeah man, take as long as you need and I can't wait to see what you make and please can you make more Elden Ring tutorials. The game has so many cool VFX you could do tutorials but anyways, I'm going off topic now so yeah, that is it. If you have any questions, just ask away. Thanks. If I am not mistaken, there already is a game like this, it is called Super Mario Galaxy, right? Let's recreate Super Mario Galaxy in 5 hours then. <laughs> It shouldn't be hard as I already have Super Mario models in a hard drive somewhere. I just gotta find it. First thing we do is add a sphere in our scene that will act as the planet and give it a green color. I also created a quick start particle system with a gradient and proceeded to import all the 3D models I will be using in this project. First one is Mario. I had to animate him real quick with a jump, idle, and walk animation. There's also the enemy plant that needed an attack, idle, and spawn animation. Lastly we got the star and mushroom. Instead of placing every single mushroom, enemy, and star in my scene, I figured it would be faster as well as better for replayability if I do it all procedurally. We can do a loop for a certain amount of times to spawn our mushroom on a random sphere location and for eye candy, we can set a random size to it so that there are tiny as well as giant mushrooms. We have to also rotate it accordingly, so now I can just call this function whenever I want to spawn these mushrooms on the map. Using the same code, we can spawn as many enemy plants as well as stars.
At the beginning of each game, one set of mushrooms will spawn and this will dictate the shape of the level. Mushrooms have colliders, so you will have to either jump over them or just go around them, then we spawn the enemies and stars. Every time you capture a star, more enemies and stars will respawn. Until we reach a point where there is quite literally nowhere to go and you have to just die to a plant. <laughs> but um, yeah, that is the game loop. For player movement, we simply add a force to Mario towards the center of the map and use physics to move him to whatever direction we want him to move. This was quite easy to code and it didn't take me that long. Last thing we had to do was add some UI counter for the amount of stars we have captured as well as add trigger events to the star and enemy game objects to either add to the counter if we touch a star or show a defeated text if we touch an enemy. This is what we were able to create. Unfortunately my 5 hours were up so I could not add visual effects for when you die or capture stars or even make the level look prettier but I think this is a very solid starting point for a game. Just be careful with copyrights, you should definitely change the models to something else. I will send him the project and let's get going on game 3. Can you make me a scene in Unity with CM model and animations? I just want to be able to walk and run around in third person in a snowy environment like a blizzard as Crystal Maiden. I will add mechanics and features, I just need the building blocks, you know? Okay, let's do it! First thing we do is download the CM model from the official Dota 2 workshop site then import it into my project. It looks really bland, so I'm going to import the textures and this took me quite some time because there are a lot of image files, like a lot of them. After some time and tweaking some values, I had them looking quite nice. Now we need some animations. Using Dota 2 tools, I was able to import a walk, running, jump, idle, and spellcast animation. For the camera and player controls, I will import Unity's third person template, which will make it very, very easy for you to implement different features and mechanics because all the code is commented, so it is very easy to figure out how the code actually works. The cape doesn't move. Mm. I will add a dynamic bone to it so that it is animated using physics. Now it was time to make it look a bit better. I imported a simple tree I had created in the past and added a fog to the level. For more eye candy, I created a VFX graph to make it snow. It'd still look a bit boring, so I created a snow shader to enhance the whole running around a blizzard experience, and voila, this is what we have. I also added a function to create this circle around the player whenever we use the spell animation. But um, yeah, that is it. You can take this project on many different directions, but make sure you swap out the Crystal Maiden model and animations because <laughs> copyright infringement, right? You can also change the height of the snow if you want. Well, go crazy with it, have fun. That's pretty much it for this video, I hope you guys found it entertaining, I had a lot of fun making these prototypes. If game development content is your thing, please do like and subscribe. Thanks to my Patreons for making all these videos possible and thank you for watching. See you guys in the next video.